you know? So he's in the garage, he pushed me by and ran on out. I know it, he was, he stripped me off, he tried to rip me off. Do you know what his name is? Uh, Mike, I don't know if I see him. Uh, where's the guy you shot? He's in the garage, he was running out the garage as I was getting out, as I was coming in. Okay, is he, is he dead or what is he? I don't know. Okay. I just shot him a bunch of times as he, he had a gun. And... Okay, let's focus on your wife. Who shot your wife? He did? Uh, he did. In the heart of Las Vegas, a city known for its glittering lights and high-stakes gambles, a dark tale of deceit and murder quietly unfolded. It was the year 2008. A shocking crime would send shockwaves through the community, revealing a web of secrets that seemed straight out of a noir thriller. This is the story of Thomas Randolph, a man whose life was intertwined with a haunting pattern of tragedy and loss. Known as The Widower, Randolph had walked down the aisle six times, leaving a trail of shattered unions. But it was with his sixth wife, Sharon Koss, that fate took its darkest turn. Their union, like the city itself, was a complex dance of glamour and shadows, leading to a night that would forever change their lives. After 911 call, police arrived at the scene, where they found a dead body of Sharon Koss and a dead body of another man that Thomas was claiming to be the one who killed his wife. I get right here and Sharon's laying in the floor, face down, her head's just barely, I mean, barely in the bedroom of that. I said, Sharon, Sharon. I thought it just seemed like a shadow or something over this way. He kind of rushed up on me a little bit, and that's when I just pushed him. <laughs> and he started going out toward the shed. I don't know how many times I shot him, but I just just kept right on going. Boom, boom, boom. And he just lay in there, and then started coming back down this way. He wasn't moving. He uh, some noise. Squared off on you, still had his mask on? Yeah. If he'd had his mask off, you'd have known it was Mike, right? Oh, yeah. And I was still shot him. I was still shot him. It wouldn't matter a bit. The intruder was identified as Mike Miller, who Thomas knew very well as he used to do odd jobs here and there. He was also employed by Thomas once. Police found many inconsistencies in Thomas's statement. He said that his wife was shot in the hallway. However, most bullet shell casing were found in the garage. He initially said that he entered the house after Sharon and heard the shots, but then he said that he didn't hurt anything and found his wife dead in the hallway. According to the neighbor, the shots were fired at 8.30 p.m., but he called 911 at 8.45. Thomas said he called 911 not more than two minutes later. Thomas also said that he shot Mike in the head while he was wearing a ski mask. However, the ski mask looked undamaged and had no blood on it. It looked like it was simply dropped beside him. Police questioned friends and family of Thomas Randolph, but didn't find anything useful. However, a friend of Mike came forward and gave police a startling information. She said that Mike told her that Thomas wanted Mike to kill his wife, Sharon. Thomas Randolph expressed this desire to Mike not once, but many times. So, there was a strong possibility that Thomas hired Mike to kill his wife, and he killed Mike so there would be no witness left that knew he wanted to kill his wife. Also, there would be a good story to tell the authorities about the intruder who came and killed his wife, and he killed him in self-defense. Sharon had three life insurances, in which Thomas was going to get $350,000. He was not much happy when he learned that Sharon changed the will to her daughter without telling him in which he was not subjected to get anything from her insurance. The detectives investigated more about Thomas's past and learned that wife died due to an accident is not something very new for him. Is there anything I can't tell you at all that happened that day that made him believe that he needed to get into your house that night? I I did it. I took 20, I took 20 grand out of the bank. I had 20 grand transfers in Utah. He was trying to shoot me. I've told you this over and over. He was trying to shoot me. I like you. You I don't like, by the way. I don't know why. I just don't like you. Something else, guys, because you know what? Unless you come and just tell me I'm under arrest or you just really need to talk to me to clear something else up, I'm probably not coming back out of here for at least 30, 40 days. You think we should tell you you're under arrest? No, because if you are, you f***ed up. You f***ed up.
this one's an easy one for you. This one's an easy one for you because the forensics is there. You have some, you have some issues. Randolph's history was a labyrinth of suspicious deaths. His wives seemed to meet untimely ends, but the evidence to convict him remained elusive. His uncanny ability to evade justice raised eyebrows. In 1975, Thomas was 20 years old and he married his high school lover, Catherine, one of his wife that is still alive. The detectives started their investigation by talking to his first wife, who told that they had two children together. Just after a few years, Thomas was beginning to change as he was less interested about marital life. He would have anger issues and would outburst on little things. He had multiple affairs and was on drugs and would psychologically abuse Catherine. She didn't take much and file for divorce in 1983. In the same year, he married Becky. This relationship has its issues too. Thomas would now have affair with other women openly. He would bring several women to his basement and sometime would invite his wife to join with them. Becky was found shot dead on her bed and her death was ruled as a suicide as there was a note left in the kitchen counter. However, there were doubts her death as the gun she was holding was from her non-dominant hand and the blanket was covered but no other concrete evidence. Eric Tarantino was approached by Thomas asking him to kill his wife Becky. Eric called Becky and let her know what her husband wants and fled. Becky knew that Thomas was after her insurance money, but Thomas did what he wanted to do. Thomas was arrested in 1989 for killing his wife Becky as Eric was testifying against him. He hired a hitman while he was in jail to kill Eric Tarantino before he could testify. That man turns out to be an undercover cop. The jury found Thomas not guilty and ruled the death of Becky a suicide. However, he pleaded guilty on hiring a hitman and was sentenced just 18 months in prison and would still get the insurance money from Becky. In 1994, he married Leona, but they got divorced soon within the same year. She then died years later due to cancer. In 1995, Thomas met and married Gaynor, who learned about his past and the charge of he was arrested. She feared and had doubts about her husband. Thomas was searching for a hitman to kill her wife, but he found no one at that time. One day, Thomas was cleaning his gun and accidentally shots fired in Gaynor's direction, but misses her by inches. She got really scared and left him. In 1997, he married Francis, who had a heart condition that was not life-threatening but can be cured by a surgery that had minimal chances of her survival. He convinced her to get surgery and fortunately, the surgery went fine and the operation was successful. After surgery, Thomas asked that he wanted to be alone with his wife. Frances died when she was alone with him. Her death didn't have much suspicion as she had gone through a life-threatening surgery. He enjoyed the money that he received from Frances' life insurance. He later sued the hospital for his wife's death and received a hefty $1.5 million. Thomas Randolph was arrested for the murder of his wife Sharon Kass on May 19, 2009. He was taken into custody following an investigation into the circumstances surrounding Sharon's death, which occurred in 2008. Hey, real quick, put your hands on your head right now. Put your hands on your head now. Come on your head. Keep on it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Come out. Taser. Let me see. Taser. Taser. On the ground. On the ground. Oh, my God. That's to me. Oh. On the ground. On your belly. On your belly. On your belly. Hands behind your back. Oh my God! Oh, what are you doing? You're under arrest. Understanding. Oh my God! Oh Jesus! Oh, oh, hands up! Get him up! Oh my God! Oh, my stand up and watch. Thomas, you understand that I was there to arrest you on homicide warrants, correct? I, 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 you seem to speak pretty good English right now. Yeah. You understand I was there to arrest you on a homicide warrant, right? I don't, don't remember me resisting. I don't are, you, are you a gun enthusiast? Do you have guns? Of course I've got guns. Okay, you Did got I have one in your face? No, but you had one. His two wives testified against him in court. He had a lot of extracurricular activities, um, namely other women. What happened at your kitchen table? Supposedly I was told the gun was, there was no bullets in the gun. 
That's what the defendant had told you. Yes, and that he was cleaning the gun at the dining room table, and the gun went off and put a, within not very far away from me and put a hole in the kitchen floor. Would it be fair to say that the hole was inches away from you? Yes, but I could see the smoke. Do you believe that based upon what you know uh, about the situation and your then husband, Thomas Randolph, that the shooting in the kitchen was an attempt to kill you? Yes. Thomas Randolph was convicted for the murder of his wife, Sharon Koss. In 2017, he was found guilty of two counts of first-degree murder in relation to the deaths of both Sharon Koss and Michael James Miller. After being convicted of two counts of first-degree murder, Thomas Randolph was sentenced to death. However, his request for retrial was accepted and is currently behind bars. Support us for more videos. <laughs>